All right, let's chat about form design, specifically about validation. So today I wanted to delve a little bit deeper into form design following up from my previous video, which was the real basics of form design. And I wanted to do today's video focused on validation. So there are, there are really two types of validation. There is inline validation, which happens as soon as you exit a field. And then there is post submit validation, which is what happens after you submit the form. And then I also want to talk about a third type, which isn't really validation, but I think it falls under the same category, which is field restrictions. Look, I'll just delve straight into it. But first off, I actually need a form. So I'll quickly build the form and then we'll get on with it. All right, there we have it, a money request form. Totally a real form. Let's consider the three types of validation that we talked about earlier. So first we'll talk about preventative validation or the field restrictions. So let's say we have the first name, last name, email address, and amount. So for first name and last name, we could get really strict and say that we would expect no numbers or symbols in a name. Probably can't assume that there are no symbols considering that people have hyphenated first and last names. And numbers, well, we possibly could, but again, there might be someone in the world with a number in their name. I know someone in New Zealand actually tried to call one of their children for real. They got denied, but still, I wouldn't want to put a lot of money on there being no one in the world with a number in their name. Now, email address, you're going to have symbols, you're going to have numbers, you're going to have a whole bunch of crap in there that you can't really restrict. Now, if we've got this money request form and we are saying, tell us how much money you want to request, then we would assume that numbers are going to go in here. And there's really only one or two ways that you can write a number. And that is to just write $40 if you want $40 or you could actually write it as $40 with zero cents. So we can assume that there are going to be numbers and there's going to be a full stop. Now what that means is that on this amount field, we could actually put a lot of rules in place that mean that a user cannot type any letters, they cannot type exclamation points or at symbols, they can only write numbers and they can only write a one full stop. And what this means is that the user is, they're gonna find it very difficult to screw up that field which means they're not going to be able to do things like accidentally do an L here, in which case the person receiving that data on the other end has no idea what that means. They're not going to be able to type a bunch of letters or they're not going to be able to type a bunch of random things. We're basically minimizing the risk of the user making a mistake. Now, as we talked about with email address, last name and first name, it actually gets pretty difficult to do that because we can't assume or restrict what we want them to put in there. And this is where inline validation comes in handy. So something like an email address, we can use inline validation really well with an email address because we know two things. There are two characteristics that are always present for with an email address and that is an at symbol and a full stop. So we can assume that if the user types uh, their name and then at hotmail.com, that that is a valid email address. Now, if they typed name hotmail.com, we can tell that there's no at symbol and therefore it is an incorrect email address. We can also assume that if they type an at here and then no full stop, so we've got, we can pick up one at symbol and no full stops, that that is also an incorrect email address. Now what you can do with this is you can basically point this out to the user when they leave the field. Assuming that they have finished typing, we can assume that they think that they have put in the correct information. Now I wanna be very particular there because a lot of websites and a lot of forms actually do validation as soon as you get into the field. So as soon as you start typing, it says your email address is incorrect, even though you've only typed name at Hotmail and you've written, you know, half of the field, it's still telling you it's incorrect and no shit Sherlock because you haven't finished typing. So rule of thumb, and I would say this should be 100% rule of thumb or just a rule, always do inline validation after the user leaves the field. So on blur. 
And what you want to do is you want to, you can style this in many different ways, but the standard one is to just highlight the field in red and put a little red notice underneath the field and say something like incorrect email format, please fix. Considering they have written in name hotmail.com and then they tab out of this field and then it pops up and says incorrect email format, please fix. That is relatively straightforward. They know that they have entered something and it is an incorrect format. Cool, so we have covered field restriction, which is literally restricting or limiting the characters that they can put into the field to prevent errors from occurring up front. We have addressed inline validation, which is picking up on the formatting or as much information as possible when the user leaves the field. But there are always cases where you can't do inline validation. Now, I always push for as much upfront inline validation as possible. And this is because it keeps the user aware and it doesn't leave them with any false hope. So imagine filling out a long form and you've not been told that there's any errors and then you submit the form at the end and oh, lo and behold, there are 20 errors that you could have actually fixed earlier on. The reality is it's a lot quicker and easier to fix the incorrect fields right here and now, as opposed to submitting it, getting taken back to the form and then getting shown a whole bunch of errors. But sometimes you have to do it. So let's say all of these fields are mandatory. So mandatory meaning the user has to complete or put data into each and every field. And let's assume that they have put in a correct email address and so we'll get rid of that and we'll change that back to the color that it was. Whoops. And we'll assume that they have put in some, their first name, but they felt like they didn't have to put in their last name. So Mary has put in her, let's just say it's Mary123 at hotmail.com and she wants $40. I think it's kind of bad practice to assume that because she has skipped the field that she is never gonna fill it in. So I wouldn't use inline validation to bring up mandatory fields. But what I would do is use post submit validation to validate that all of the fields have that are required have data in them and that all of the data is correct. So let's say she hits the submit button. We would then want to pop up a little message basically saying the same thing as the email address. Now this is, this is pretty straightforward with a small field. You might want to actually show a little error message up here or something that says, you know, you've got um, some missing data, make it red, you know, whatever. You can style that however you want. Regardless, you can see that this is pretty straightforward on this small form, but imagine that your form is tens or hundreds of fields long across multiple pages or steps, and you have validated at the end of the process. And now the user has to go through each and every field and scan through looking for these red highlighted fields. And that's gonna be a pretty shitty experience. All right, so there we have it. We have field restriction or preventative validation, we have inline validation, and we have post-submit validation, all with their different use cases and all equally as important as the next. General rule of thumb, always push as hard as you can for field restrictions or preventative validation on the fields to stop users from entering incorrect information up front. If that's not possible, I would always opt for inline validation. So once they leave the field, tell them if something is wrong as early as possible. And last but not least, tell them something's wrong. Don't send away false or incorrect or wrong data. Try and help the users to minimize their mistakes and ultimately keep them happy. All right, thanks for listening, guys. I hope you learned something. If you liked the video, please hit that thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks, and I will see you guys next time.